Torah Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello everybody, it's Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries and we are doing the Torah portion for next Shabbat and we are up to the reading, the 16th reading and it comes from Exodus 13, 17 to 17, 16. And we're going to start off right here in Exodus 13, 17. It says, uh, Pharaoh, where we left off, let the children of Israel go finally after the plague, uh, after the death of the firstborn. He saw they were all born. He said, just go, just get out of here. We can't have any more of these. But a wonderful creator didn't let the children of Israel take the easy road. He didn't let them go in the land that goes right through the land. It was too close and he didn't want to see as it says the, the people to see uh, the war because it might change their minds and they might want to return to Egypt. Uh, so what he did is he led the people in a roundabout way. And you know he took them through the desert uh, by Sea of, Sur of Suf. That's what it says here. And this is one of the things I, we discuss all the time is a wonderful creator has a plan for us. And he knows the plan because he created it. And if we stick to his plan, he knows and has a desired outcome for us. So we have to go on faith and follow his plan. And to our own human vision, it might look kind of complicated or, or the wrong way to go. Why go so far when that's much easier to go that way and so on. Uh, but we have to go on faith if that's the way he's leading them. And that's the way he's leading them. And we talk about leading them. We see here in Exodus 16, 21, it says that a wonderful creator went ahead of them in a column of cloud during the daytime to lead them on their way. And at night, it was a column of fire. So he was leading the way for them. And it even goes so far to say, as we, we, we will see later here in the next verse here, uh, that in, in a couple of verses later, how he actually left the front of the pack that was leading them, and he went between them and the Egyptians that were following them. Amazing, amazing. And, and it's just, uh, we, we continue reading this week, uh, another thing that was amazing. Now, he's leading away, and he leads the way for us in these signs that he shows us, and we have to follow him. Regardless, we have to separate our own human thinking and with our heart follow him and saying, okay, that doesn't make sense to me. Okay, that doesn't bring pleasure to me. But you know what? That's the way he wants me to go. So I'm going to find joy and pleasure in obeying his ways because I know I will be blessed for listening and obeying him. Uh, and he goes on to say here that he was going to harden the heart of Pharaoh again. And it says this in Exodus 14, uh, 14, 4 that he would harden the heart of, of Pharaoh again, the Pharaoh of Egypt, the king of Egypt, that he would follow them again. But why? Because he wants to win glory for himself and the expense of Pharaoh and his army. All part of his master plan, folks. Well, there's a lot of wars and a lot of corruption going on in today's world and things that might not necessarily seem fair uh, to, to honest people. Uh, but take joy knowing that this is all happening according to his plan. Nothing can happen unless he allowed it. And he allows certain things to happen for a reason. And one of the major reasons is, is so he can show his glory at the expense of those wicked and uh, disobedient people. Uh, we look here, it goes on, it's to say in Exodus 14.11, uh, they said, Was it because there weren't enough graves in Egypt that you brought us out to die in the desert? That was the, the, the beginning of the complaining once the children started leaving. And we'll see from now all the way throughout their trip, all throughout the desert, how the children of Israel kept complaining when things didn't look good to Moses. You know, when, when things were good, they were happy, everything was great. But when things didn't look good, they didn't have faith. They didn't say that a wonderful creator took us out here in the desert and we're going to trust and go in faith that he'll get us to the promised land like he said he would. No. They started to grumble and they started to complain. And many things like people today, a lot of the, the, the people today whose hearts aren't in the right place, even if they call themselves believers and, and when everything's going good, everything's wonderful. But when something starts not to go good in their own, you know, fleshly human eyesight, they, then they start to complain. Instead of praising, and this is one of the most important aspects, it's the amuna, having the faith regardless how things might look, 
thanking always our wonderful creator for making a plan and letting us be part of his plan and giving us his desired outcome. He promised us abundance in all wonderful things if we pay attention to his words and keep his commands. So it says here, uh, was it that the people started to uh, say to Moshe, uh, was it because there weren't enough graves in Egypt that you brought us out to die in a desert? Why have you done this to us? Bring us out of Egypt. So they're saying to Moses, why did you bring us out? You see, first of all, that's their number one mistake. It wasn't Moses that brought him out. It was our creator that brought him out. And, and they're complaining to Moses, why did you do this to us? And, uh, and, and they go to him and they say, didn't we tell you when you, when you were in Egypt to, to leave us alone? Which they did, uh, because they had no faith. And, and now you're just going to bring us out here to die? It says we were much better off you know, being slaves than to die in the desert. But Moses was calm and cool and he said, Stop being so fearful. Remain steady and you will see how a wonderful creator is going to save you. And my advice to anyone out there that might be suffering from a disease, anyone out there that might be suffering from financial hardship, anyone out there that might be suffering, as long as you're keeping the guidelines and instructions that he's given us in the Torah, and you've accepted Messiah as who he says he is, my advice to you is the exact advice Moses gave those people when they were worried about dying. Stop being so fearful. Remain steady and you will see how he is going to save you. Then it goes on to say in Exodus 13, 19, the angel of God who was going ahead of the camp of Israel moved away from them and went behind them. And this is what we spoke about earlier. Uh, and the column of a cloud moved away in front of them and stood behind them and stationed itself between the camp and, uh, of Egypt and the camp of Israel. Uh, now remember, this is when the, uh, the, the people of Israel thought they were going to die in a desert. And here Moses says, Stop being so fearful. Remain steady and see what he's going to do. And you could actually see him. Okay. He's not leading us anymore. What happened? Oh, well, he's behind us. He's separating us from the unclean. He's dividing us from the unholy. He's keeping his holy away from the unholy. So we could be safe. So we could be rescued. And that's what he does. It goes on to say here uh, in Exodus 14.30 that Yahweh saved Israel from the Egyptians. He saved the obedient from the disobedient. And, uh, and the Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the shore. And when the Israel saw this a mighty deed that our Creator had performed, the people feared and they believed in Yahweh and, and his servant Moses, it says. They believed in Yahweh and his servant Moses. And what did he do? He opened up the sea. He opened up the ocean. And he led away for the children of Israel to go in. And the Egyptians, that was the end. That was it. Now, can you imagine seeing that? You would too, just like the children of Israel say that, you know, they saw the Egyptians dead in the shore. When Israel saw the mighty deed that a wonderful creator had performed against the Egyptians, they feared him and believed in him and his servant Moses. Well, now, of course, they're going to believe him and they're never going to doubt him, right? No, 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 no. That's not what happened. And this is the problem we have. He's continuously doing marvelous works to save us, always over and over again. Things that nobody else could do. But what happens once somebody's saved, they go right back to their old ways. I see this all the time. I'll use, I'll use cancer or, or heart disease as an example. Many times I see people getting a heart attack or people being stricken by cancer. And for whatever method they use to get better, whether it's doctors or whether it's the natural alternative, they get better. But they don't take their lesson and they go back right back to the ways that they were doing that created the problem to begin with. They didn't learn and this is the things that create the problem. And you would think after seeing the sea part open and going through it and then seeing the Egyptians not make it through there and they're saved, they're out in the desert, you would think now we're going to, and it even says that they feared him and, and Moses, they were going to listen to him. But you would think, okay, now we got it. Now we're going to listen. But that, they, they still didn't listen. It says here they were traveling again. This is in Exodus 15, uh, 15, 22. After traveling three days in the desert, they found no water. And the people grumbled against Moses asking, what are we to drink? 
Again, again they got on him. Now, being a health teacher, I could tell you this next verse I'm going to read. I quote probably more than any other verse I've quoted. And there's a reason why. And also to keep in mind that this is probably one of the most important scriptures out there. If you want to experience the wonderful blessing that comes along with being obedient to our Creator. But the opposite of blessing is a curse. You know, I have to blow the chauffeur and let people know if you're eating unhealthy, if you're overeating causing gluttony, if you're living a life against the guidelines and instructions that he gave us to live to direct our lives, you are putting yourself out there for something pretty bad to happen to you. Here's the verse, Exodus 15, 26. It says, if you will diligently listen to the voice of our wonderful creator and do what he considers right, Pay attention to his mitzvahs and observe his commands. He will not afflict you with the diseases he brought upon the Egyptians. He will not afflict you with the diseases that he brought upon the Egyptians. That's it right there, everybody. If you diligently follow his guidelines and instructions, you keep his statutes and his commands, he will not put on you the same diseases he put upon the Egyptians. What more do you need? Now I know a lot of sick people don't want to hear that something they did in their actions might be the result of their sickness, and that's not true 100% of the times. But the majority of the times it is true. And it might not only be something physically we did to create our illness. As a matter of fact, I would say more times than not it's something spiritually that we're either doing or not doing that's resulting in some type of sickness or disease. But it goes on to say in that same scripture in, in Exodus 15:26. He says he will not put those diseases on us if we keep obedient because he is our healer. He heals. So not only can he help us avoid getting the diseases, but even if we're sick, he can heal us. And he does heal us. That's what he does. But again, the second month after leaving the land of Egypt, we see here in Exodus 16 again. It says in Exodus 16 too, uh, there in the desert, the whole community, the whole community of people of Israel grumbled against Moshe and Aaron. And they said, uh, we wish that a wonderful creator had used his own hand to kill us in Egypt. There we, would, uh, we used to sit around in the pots with the meat boiling, and we had as much food as we wanted. But you have taken us out into the desert uh, and left this whole assembly to starve to death. Once again, they're worried about uh, their physical life of the food and and they're out of the slavery of Egypt, but the slavery of Egypt is not out of them. They're wishing they were back there because of the, of the food of, and, and all the other comforts that they left behind to escape. And it's no different today. You have the people going to a job every day doing something they don't do, they don't like, because they're living in fear of what's going to happen if they don't have that drug insurance, which I call, uh, some people call medical insurance, but it only pays for drugs. It doesn't pay for health, so it's not health insurance. It's drug insurance. So people are scared to step out of their comfort zone and, and, and follow their passion or follow what they were led to do. Instead, they'll go to work every day doing something that, that they don't like doing or they shouldn't be doing or they don't want to be doing uh, because they're scared what might happen. We have to take faith that He will provide all our needs. And I can assure you, where there is a need, He knows and He will provide and you will not starve to death. And the children would have not starved to death. And he says here, he goes on to say in Exodus 16, 4, he goes, By this I will test whether they will observe my Torah or not. And then he makes the, the, the bread, the manna fall from heaven, and he gives them the instructions of what to eat and what not to keep, and what not to eat. But some of the people did and some of the people didn't. And he says in Exodus 16, 28, you know, How long will you refuse to obey my commands and teachings? How long? How long? And in Exodus 17 it goes on, the whole community, the whole community again of people in Israel left the desert traveling in stages as Yahweh had ordered. So they're listening to him. Finally, the whole community is listening to him. But in the next verse, 17.2 of Exodus, it says, the people quarreled with Moses again, never being satisfied. Finally, Moses got upset. Moses got fed up and said, you know, why are you testing our wonderful Creator? Don't you understand? I am His mouthpiece. And by you complaining to me, you're complaining to Him. You are testing Him. 
you know, and, and, and it's, it's amazing. So once again, he create, uh, he, uh, a wonderful creator tells Moses to, to strike the rock, to provide water for them, and that's exactly what happened, and they have their water. Over and over and over, how much do we have to see uh, what is taking place here, and the people just don't get it. They just don't see it. Well, everybody, there it is. That's uh, this coming week's Torah Porsche, and I'm telling you now, uh, this doesn't get any better. What happens is he keeps saving them and they keep complaining, never being satisfied. And I can tell you the one major disease of all the scripture is not being satisfied with what he provides. You be satisfied with him, take faith in his plan, and you will be blessed. If you have any comments or questions, post them below the video. Until then, thanks for checking us out and have a, a wonderful week and a great Shabbat and Shalom Shalom. Torah Life Ministries come out of the world Messiah people seek the truth